All right, welcome back. Uh, two quick more examples. I'll take a look here and see what we have on this function. We're going to do the exact same thing. We're going to look at the domain, find the vertical asymptote and the horizontal asymptote, and then verify with the graph. So let's look at this. This function we need to simplify first. So if we go in and look, we can simplify this um, by factoring the numerator a little bit, or just combining like terms, actually. So we'll just take a look at the like terms. x minus 7x is minus 6x. Um, and then the bottom, we have this absolute value, which means this isn't really a rational function, but it is something we want to work with. So we're going to go ahead and look at this and see if we can make this and define it. Now, if you recall from studying absolute values, there's really two cases for each absolute value. We're going to rewrite this function with its two cases. So we have the case where x is going to be greater than 0. If x is bigger than or equal to 0, then this is just exactly what it is, and there's no change. It's just negative 6x over x plus 5. And as we have that, now let's look at the case where x is less than uh, 0. If x is less than 0, then we have to make it, it'll be negative inside here, but to get it outside the absolute value, we take the negative of what it is. So it's negative x plus 5 over uh, under negative 6x. So this is what we call a piecewise defined function. And this piecewise defined function has two parts to it, when x is bigger than 0 and x is less than 0. So if we go look at now at each individual part, these are each rational functions. So we can use everything we've talked about before and talk about the domain and the range. So if we look up here at the domain, what are we not allowed to put in here? We have to look out where this is going to be 0. Um, the denominator will never be 0 because I can never get a negative here. Because if we have positive 5, 5 plus 5 is 5. If I put in a negative 5, it would be negative, negative 5, so it will still be 10. So the point is that part A is all real numbers. The domain is all real numbers. Uh, part B, let's take a look at the vertical asymptotes. The vertical asymptotes. That's where the denominator is 0. Well, we just discussed the denominator will never be 0, so we have no vertical asymptotes. So now we'd like to look at part D, or C. Part C is the horizontal asymptote of F. So that's where we have to go back and look at our rules that we had before that aren't on this page. And the rules were if we take a look at the powers, so the degree of each. The degree of each are the same. If the degrees are the same, then we take the leading coefficients. So the leading coefficient up here is negative 6. So for this one, we have y equals negative 6 over 1, which is negative 6. And for this one, we have negative 6 over negative 1, which is 6. So our two horizontal asymptotes, and we get two, one for each side, are negative 6 and 6. So if we go ahead and look at the graph of this, the graph has 6 and negative 6, and it's going out here towards it. Let's modify this graph and look and see if it really crosses it or if it goes close to it. And as I get closer and closer out here, as x is increasing forever and ever and ever, it's always going to get close to but never go over that, those two asymptotes. So I hope that helps a little bit. Um, you have some better understanding of how this works. Um, let's take a look at the next one. This is actually now putting into practice some of the things we've been learning. So some of this is going to be a review of what we've done before. We're going to look at how we can solve these things. So we have C, cost in millions of dollars, removing some percentage of an industrial list and municipal pollutants that have been put into a river. So there's a formula they gave us. It's 255 times the percentage you want divided by the percentage minus from 100. And that is a, a rational function because we have a linear over a linear. It's of degree 1 on the top and the bottom. So again, we know a lot about its asymptotes. If this we're just looking at this function, the asymptotes would be at 100 for the vertical. OK, 
because you're not going to pass over here at 100. You can't put 100 in the denominator. 100 is not in the domain because we have less than 100, so we know that's not a problem anyway. But that's where the asymptote will be. It's going to approach that. Something's going to approach at 100. And uh, the horizontal asymptote is going to be at negative 255 leading coefficients. Now, negative 255 is probably not going to be in our thing because the cost of a negative 255 million dollars would be a good cleanup cost, but it's not going to be in our range if we're looking from 0 to 100. So let's go ahead and take a look at the graph of this. As we look at the graph of this, um, we see um, I graphed it like this with the limit on the domain, and we have this. I put things in here, so let's take a look as, as we move out here so we can see the entire domain. We'll make sure that we can see all the way to 100. That takes off really steep, so I'm going to take this and make it a little, so I can see a little bit more what's going on on this graph. Talking millions of dollars here, right? $500 million to clean up a river. So there we have a better picture of what we're looking at, and you can see the other asymptote down there. But as we get closer and closer up here to 90% of the pollutants, we're talking some serious money up here. Look, that's, what is that? Almost... 3,000 million, which would be what? 30 million or 300, whatever it is. Lots of money. That with another six zeros after, it's a lot of money. So it makes sense. This problem starts off, we're not going to get any of the pollutants off. It's going to be zero dollars. If I plug in zero here, zero times 255 is zero over 100 minus zero. Zero over anything is going to be zero as long as it's not zero. So zero costs zero. And we can come up equally as far as C. So let's go ahead and see how we can use the graph and our math knowledge to answer the questions. Find the cost of removing 10% of the pollutants. So I have 10% of the pollutants. That's P is 10. So I can plug in the equation. C of 10 equals 255 times 10 over 90. Did that math in my head for you. Um, the tens are going to cross, so this is really 255 over 9. 255 divided by 9. We'll go actually calculate what that is as a decimal cost in dollars. 255 divided by 9, it's going to be $28.3 million. $28.3 million. That's part A. We can do the same thing for B and C. I'll leave that on your own to do. Um, the answers I'm going to get from the graph this time just so we have them quick and you can check them. You want to pause, but I can calculate. I have C, so I want to find the point, we'll call it point B, because B is the question. We want B to equal, what was B? B is 40%, so that would be 40, comma C of 40. And I see that that is right there, and it is... 170 million dollars. 170 million dollars for 40 percent. And we can do one more. We'll call part C, which is 75 percent. Uh, so 75 comma C of 75. And we get 'oh, I can't call it C because it's already named C, but it's all C one. And this over here gives us. 75% would cost $765 million. So that's a lot of money. We have our two answers. We just plugged it into the equation. You can use a graphing calculator for that. You can use your just plug and chug. You can get the answer. So moving along, um, we've already graphed it. We can see the cost. We've modeled it. And now answering part E. Part E says, according to this model, what is the That's the phone. Would it be possible to remove 100% of the pollutants? So I can look at the graph, and the graph of this shows I'm never going to get to 100. Number one, 100% is never, not in the domain. But even if it were, it's the asymptote, so it's not going to go there. So the answer to this question is no, since 100 is neither in the domain nor and it's the asymptote 
not ever going to be 100%. And mathematically that works. It also makes sense um, on a level of uh, what would it, just intuitively it should make sense that you're not going to get 100% of a river ever cleaned. So that hopefully answers that. Nice short 10 minute video, two problems. Hopefully you can now see how you can apply this knowledge of the graph to solving equations. See you in class. Thanks.